Christian Parenting. Aloha, friends. Welcome to the Monica Swanson Podcast, powered by Christian Parenting. I am Monica Swanson, mom to four boys, wife to Dr. Dave, podcast host and author of Boy Mom and Raising Amazing. Here on the podcast, it is my goal to bring you practical advice and biblical wisdom for raising amazing kids and building strong families. You can always find show notes over at monicaswanson.com forward slash podcast. I'm so glad you're here and I hope you'll be encouraged. Hey friends, you've heard me talk about HelloFresh before, and I'm here to remind you of America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh offers farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. Now, I know a lot of you have told me that you are trying to sit down to dinner together as a family more this year, but what do you do about nights when your schedule is packed? Well, turn to HelloFresh's lineup of quick and easy meals, including their 15-minute recipes designed to help minimize mealtime stress. I know that this time of year, everyone's looking to revamp their eating habits, so look to HelloFresh's wholesome health-forward options as well like over 30 calorie smart and protein smart recipes each week. Go to hellofresh.com forward slash Monica free and use code Monica free for free breakfast for life. What? That's right. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at hellofresh.com forward slash Monica free and use code Monica free. Yay for HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Hey friends, welcome back to the podcast. And I am opening this episode with a big smile on my face because I get to share an interview with you that I was really wanting to have for a long time. And it was so fun when I actually got to talk to Brant Hansen. Now, if you're not familiar with Brant, he is a radio show host, he's a podcast host, he's an author, he's a super smart guy, and he's a self-proclaimed quirky guy, which I love so much. But I first heard about Brant because of his book, The Men We Need, which I highly recommend. Excellent book. But when I opened that, I was laughing out loud and reading excerpts to my family because I found him to be just so refreshing and so wise. But then at the beginning of 2023, he had an updated version of a book he wrote years ago come out, and it is called Unoffendable, How Just One Change Can Make All of Life Better. And when I read that book, I was like, that's it. We have to get him on the podcast because this topic is so relevant to our world today. And what better time to share it than right now before we go into the holidays? Am I right? I mean, we love the holidays. They're magical and fun and all the good things, but They also can be a time where we gather with people we might only see during the holidays, and sometimes there's different viewpoints, and it is so easy to get offended, right? Tell me I'm not the only one. Also, just in the stress and the strain of the season, I think this topic, we talk about anger and and what to do with anger, and he gets really practical, and I just think this might be one of the most important conversations you can listen to before the holidays. So I'm going to trust you to listen, share it with your friends, and I just hope you're super duper encouraged by it. Um, But you're going to love Brand. If you haven't um, followed him yet, definitely go to show notes. I'll have links to all the places, and I'll even have a link to the uh, Instagram post that we talk about in this episode, one that Levi and I have watched over and over. It's a reel. And we have just laughed so hard at this one particular Instagram reel that I think you're going to enjoy as well. So before we get into that interview, I also want to tell you about a resource that I think many of you are going to want to get your hands on. I hear from so many parents that want to find good devotionals for their kids. And especially during the Christmas season, we all want to help our families get our focus on Jesus, right? But it can be hard in the hustle and bustle of the season. We get distracted, and sometimes we can get really frustrated with how hard it is to keep Jesus at the center. But Christian Parenting has a new Advent devotional made just for the kids, and it is called Jesus, Light of the World. And this is going to help our kids understand how Jesus was the light that came to heal and save a hurting and broken world. And each day of this devotional has a daily scripture, a devotional, 
engaging activities, a prayer, and I love this, a go activity that encourages kids to take ownership of their faith in their everyday lives. This is such a great tool to teach your children the true meaning and significance of the Christmas season. So for more information and to request a copy, head over to cpgive.org. Again, the letters cpgive.org. Org. I think you're going to love this, so don't wait. Get them before they're gone. And now, without further ado, we get to jump into this interview with Brant Hansen, talking about what it means and how we can become unoffendable during the holidays and all year long. I hope you enjoy. Brant, welcome to the podcast. Hi, I'm excited. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I am more excited. My whole family's really excited about this one because we've been a fan of yours for quite a while. And so uh, I I just appreciate you taking the time to join us. And well, I want to focus on one of your books today, but you've written a few really good books. And nice. so maybe to just start us off, let's start with family. Tell us, tell us first where you are and about your family, then we'll get to the books next. Yeah. Um, I live in Jupiter, Florida. And I'm originally from Illinois, Indiana, little towns and stuff. And I've been married for 33 years, Carolyn. And our kids are grownups. Uh, our son's 29. Our daughter's 26, 27. She just turned 27. And um, we just became grandparents like a year ago. So we're, it's pretty darn awesome. Ah, oh, I'm so excited for that. Yeah. And are yeah. they near you? Yeah, they are for now. Uh, I think they'll move. They want to be in some mountains. And unfortunately, Jupiter has a lot going for it, but we don't have mountains here on the beach. So I totally get that. So we're, we'll be on the road a lot. That's fine. As long as you can go back and forth, right? Yeah. That's what I say. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And and I also want you to tell us about your son because this, this is a good story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, yeah, we were just chatting about this. She's like, wait. Um, so let's talk about this after we record. Yeah. So our son is awesome. And I, of course, as a dad, well, our daughter, they both are, but the dad bragging wants to kick in. He's on the spectrum like me, but he's come so far. I think we both have. And he was homeschooled the whole way. And of course, the whole time my wife is thinking, am I doing a good job? I don't, I don't think I'm doing a good job. We forgot, we missed two days for this. And then I haven't done this curriculum. And we still not, like, I think they're turning out okay. Well, he went to Berkeley, UC Berkeley, um, and got his degree in Slavic languages and linguistics because he wanted to study Russian literature and whatnot. And at the same time, he was in the military. He was in ROTC. So he became a uh, intel officer after that. And they really liked him. So he uh, he benefited the Army and the Air Force as an intel officer in Afghanistan. And now he's at Yale and he's at medical school. He's in his third year doing rotations and stuff. His, his goal is to be a neurosurgeon. And I would lay money on that. He's a very focused person. And I I do a lot of work with these hospitals around the world. So I would take him with me. To observe, he would go in the OR and stand. He was just like, "Okay, I want to do this." So that's that's his goal right now is to be a neurosurgeon for cure, and serve possibly in Africa or the Philippines or Vietnam or wherever cure is. So it's cool. Wow, brag away, Dad! I mean, thanks. Come on. Well, the funny thing, somebody passed along a tweet from um, Gosh, what's it? Keith Olbermann. It's something about he he told some woman like. Because she homeschooled, she's like, "Well, congratulations on ruining your child's life." And I had to write, I had to write back, like, "I'll apologize to my son, but he's currently too busy <laughs> at Yale <laughs> after being a decorated intel officer from Afghanistan exactly. and finishing top of his department at Cal Berkeley." But I'll, I'll make sure he knows his life is ruined. Oh, that is so good. I love it. Well, I can I can quote you in that one because yes. that's, that's yes. so perfect. Well, well done. And well done to your wife. I'd love mm -hmm. to meet her. She sounds like a great person who has been a lot of fun to do. She's life brilliant. With. She's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, and, and even before then we get to the books, tell us more about yourself because you're an interesting guy. <laughs> uh, I'm quirky. So I think, <laughs> we like quirky. This our family is all about quirky. Good. See, you know what? I tell people like, it's a good idea in life to just have a high quirk tolerance. 
Like some people, like that, that guy's weird. Like that guy's interesting is what he is. Like if somebody gets fired up about some narrow arena or area, like that's really fascinating. Tell me more. So I love that. I like, I like the energy and curiosity that comes with, with quirks. And so some people like, and you're missing out on a lot of interesting people if you can't handle it. Um, gosh, about me. So I host a radio show daily. I've been doing this for years. I didn't intend to. I meant to be a newsman and it kind of metastasized into being a syndicated <laughs> host of my own <laughs> show. And that was entirely not my plan and I didn't orchestrate it or anything. So that's part of it. The books have been recent. I've been writing the books, which has been good. And um, I think, I think it's a weird working with cure has been wonderful. Like it's this, it's the, there are these hospitals that serve moms mainly because the dads usually leave when you have a child with any kind of disability. And what we do are top notch orthopedic and neurosurgeries for people who have no money serving in some of the worst places in the world. And we do it for free and we do it overtly in the name of Jesus. So we tell people it's because God loves you. We pray over the kids on the OR, like the surgeons pray over the kids before the surgeries. Like it's, it's a remarkable place. And it, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of jaded on some church culture stuff. So for me to be able to see that, I'm like, okay, it looks like Jesus to me. So I've kind of thrown myself into it 100%. Mm. Oh, that is so cool. I, I definitely want to look into learning more about that because I hadn't heard of it until you. It's remarkable. Yep. Um, and briefly about the radio show, is that something anyone can tune Like, could I find that here in Hawaii or how do I, how do people check that out? I can't, I don't think we have any affiliates right now in Hawaii, but. So um, it's not like online. Well, yeah, it is on a bunch of stations. So like, we're like on SoCal and New York City and like all over the place. But if you just go to brandhanson.com, you can find affiliates there. And there's quite a few, but um, you can also just listen to our podcast wherever Which you live. Great. Brant and Sherry Oddcast. Well, it's with my radio producer, Sherry, and she is also just, I, I say, I said my wife's a genius. She's a genius, too. She's she's unbelievably talented, smart, tolerant She, she does well with you. She does. Uh, she's great at ad-libbing. So that's where we exist. And I think that's why it sounds human. And we're both very influenced growing up by broken families um, working through that in terms of our faith, that pain. And then also the other thing is the Muppet show. So the Muppet show influences us. <laughs> we like the struggle of it. Cause you watch the Muppet show, you see the struggle of putting on a, a show and you just see yes. through it. So that, that's what our thing is. It's like, we're not trying to I love that. Do not, young people today even know about the Muppet show? They should. Is it still they, like, can they find it still? I heard it was being put on Netflix or something. I haven't. That's a great question. Okay, because yeah, that was a big part of my growing up years too. So I'm right there. You with understand? You. I get that. Yeah, oh yeah, for you sure. See me. Thank you. Good. Yes, I do. I feel that. <laughs> well, that is really good. Um, I just I knew that I was going to get on this interview with you, and I just want to giggle the whole time because literally, <laughs> just any time. My 13 year old is actually one of your biggest fans, and here's why. Oh, awesome. I'm gonna awesome. I'm gonna link to something in the show notes, but um, on your Instagram, when your book Unoffendable came out, maybe it was in the new year of 2023, you did a little video promo that your um, publisher wanted you to do, where you are showing your book in different. <laughs> different settings <laughs> i think we have watched that like an embarrassing number of times my 13 year old thinks That's you awesome. that is probably of, i mean there's a lot of funny things on social media right now. Like yeah. kids can be entertained for days, but yeah. that's the one he keeps coming back to. And he has to watch it to the end. And, um, <laughs> because it just gets better. Like right when you think it's going to end, you just kind of keep going. And I was actually thinking about you because recently I heard a sermon and you know how sometimes people just can't quite wrap up a sermon. Like they get yes. to the end and it's like, okay, we're done. Yeah. But they kind of keep going and you're getting awkward and you're like, this needs to wrap up. Will you do that? But the best stuff, <laughs> the best stuff is at the right. end. I even yeah. noticed that on your podcast because like you'll hit the end of a topic, but just keep going and it just gets better. So that's uh that's quite intentional. And um, 
you, that's a good reminder about the book things. So I have to do another promo for the new book I got coming out in January, which is I just remembered I have to do a video like now. And they just sent me photos like these. If you, if you to know what we're talking about, like your publisher will send you photos of your book before it's actually printed, and it'll be like on a coffee table next to some coffee, or it's on it's on the back porch, or like next to some coffee. And it is, but but the digital but, version. Yeah, yeah, it's all it's all photoshopped. And so I made a point of going. Well, here's a here's what the book will look like if it's on top of a black coffee table i think that's what you're talking about i can't remember oh, it's a hundred percent that's yeah, it so, so i just don't <laughs> i can't do the, the smooth thing so i just don't even try i just try to like here you could see all the way through like here's the thing so that's it's that's so our good deal. That's our deal. and by the end you are talking about the village christmas village which of course my son totally <laughs> thought right. was the best i will link to it everyone listening needs to go good. check it out but we're talking about this book, Unoffendable, which is what I want to talk about today. Yes. Yes. And before we dive into that, I, I've also read your book. The, is it The Men We Need? That's the yeah. title, right? Yeah. So good. Thanks. And um, what else have you written? Name your other books for us. There's a book called The Truth About Us, about our cognitive biases and stuff. And then there's a book called Blessed Are the Misfits, about being an introvert or a spiritual struggler and where do you fit in when everyone else or other people have these incredible... Christian experiences or feelings or whatever. Like, what if I don't have that? Because I generally don't. Um, so that's what that's about. Kind of welcoming people who feel like misfits. Yeah. Okay. And then the next one. What's well, the next one? Um, um, I haven't even announced it you- on my own show, but it's called, uh, it's called, it's about, it's about peace, even though the world's crazy. Like, can you actually have joy? Is it even legitimate to be joyful and hopeful given headlines of the nature of our world. And I believe it is. And the book is called Life is Hard, God is Good, Let's Dance. So I tell a lot of stories. Thank you. I tell a lot of stories from the cure hospitals and whatnot to just to demonstrate how, what God's actually doing in the world. And you don't have to be naive to be hopeful. In fact, hope is the, real hope is the opposite of naive. It's, It's actually a very rational thing that's based on what you know to be true and how this, and including how this all ends and how God will work things out. So it's, it's about like living with that. Awesome. Okay. Well, we're all going to want that one too, for cool. sure. So, okay. So can we talk about being unoffendable? Because I think if there's ever a time in our world, we, we all need this message. How, how did you end up writing it? What's the story behind it? This is a terrible story. Um, <laughs> it really is. It's one of the, but it, it's either the least inspiring or most inspiring thing. I literally just got, I was always like, I need to write. I need to write a book. Everybody's like, you should write a book. You like to write. And I never did. And then I read Seth Godin, the marketing guy. He wrote a book about called Lynchpin. It's about, he's like, I'm not that good of a writer, but you know what? At least I get something done. A lot of people are like, oh, I'd love to write, but they never hit send. They never finish it. They never ship the product. He's like, look, even if it's mediocre, a shipped product is better than nothing. And that freed me up. So I literally did this. I know this is going to sound weird. I went to the coffee shop and I said, I'm going to sit down and write a bad chapter about something, but I'm going to write it. And I'm not even going to get up from this chair. It's going to be horrible, but I'm going to get it done. And then I did that two weeks in a row. I wrote chapter, and they were mediocre at best. And I sent them off to Harper Collins, and they were like, "Yeah, what else do you have a do you have an outline for this?" Like, sure, yes, I have an outline right here. I'll do that right now, right now. So I cobbled oh, that wow. together quickly, and that became unoffendable. Wow. And that why weird? that topic? That no, that's think, amazing. And I love I, it. Free, it's very freeing. It's, it was very, yeah, that's what I was thinking. For people, if you're listening, you're like, I can't create that thing. Well, sometimes your perfectionism stops you from making something that could be a blessing to people. Like, I, I'm not I'm not Tolkien. I can't produce that. But I thought I maybe I should produce something masterwork. Well, that's never going to happen. Mm-hmm. Heard something like, you know, shoot for the... B, B, B minus even maybe it was. And that really inspired me because I'm like, if I'm going for an A plus every time, I'm never going to get anything done. You'll never get it done. But if I can get a B, why not? Yeah. Especially if like, I'm not capable of writing an epic science fantasy or whatever. Like, Right. 
Yeah. I'm capable that's of writing what job. I did. So that's a lesson for everybody. I hope. And it's like, just, just get it done. The other thing is uh, why that topic, it just, can't, it's like top of mind. And I had been talking about it on the air. I'm like, how long are we supposed to be mad? So this isn't a Christian context. I'm asking this question. I know we have righteous anger. How long do I hold on to my righteous anger? Am I supposed to feel righteous anger the rest of my life for every incident? Because there's some horrible stuff. Like every day there's legit horrible headlines and injustice and pain. And like, is that the way? To, and so I asked the question on the air thinking, honestly, that somebody theologically astute would call in and go, well, here's, the, here's how to think about that. And no one could. They could and, not and tell me. And this was back... Your, because the copy I have is your uh, updated version of the book. Mm -hmm. This was originally your first book. How long ago? I know it, it sold over 200,000 copies. Two, 2015, okay, 2015. Yeah. Okay. And so back then, the world was not even where it's at now. I mean, it was already. Yeah. We already had a big... Yeah, we already had a big problem, but then it exploded. It became more of a national consciousness, like, okay, we got a problem. Everybody writing about an epidemic of anger and whatnot. And with that, lots of articles to this day, you can read from psychologists, sociologists, observers, where they're talking about what to do about your anger. And they have many responses. Um, holding your breath, listen to some nice music, take a bubble bath or whatever. And those are that's those are neat things, but it's like they very rarely mention forgiveness. So I think Jesus is a genius himself. He's the smartest man who ever lived. He knows the way to live. So uh, this is this is his way of living, and it turns out it's incredibly freeing. And it, yeah, yeah, I I think that's probably the key word there is how freeing it is. I I've definitely been camping out just the past few months on, I guess it is about being unoffendable, but just walking in humility and how freeing that alone is, which is probably, you know, really the key to all of this is just recognizing like how sinful and broken and messed up I am. And maybe yes. I could extend a little grace to the people around me. That's the only way you can do it. I think, honestly, I think the benefits of forgiveness, anybody can benefit from it, but the resource that I have is gratitude, like you said, humility, where I have to face the fact, even with brutal headlines of horrible people, it's like, apparently, the idea is that I'm responsible for Calvary, what happened there? I mean, we all are. We all bear that. But that was pretty ugly. It was a pretty violent execution of an innocent person that I'm responsible for. And so I'm very grateful. It's not a guilt trip. It's a, it's a gratitude trip. It's just like, God has chosen to forgive me. I have to extend that to other people, whether they deserve it or not. They don't deserve it, but I didn't either. So that's, that's the resource for it. Totally. And this always makes me think of the story when, who was it? The sinful woman anointed Jesus. And I think it was Simon that was critical of the situation. And Jesus was like, well, her many sins have been forgiven. So she loves much, but he who's been forgiven little loves little. I think of that often. Like when I recognize how much I've been forgiven, I can love so much more freely. Yeah. So when, if you're going to practice this lifestyle of forgiving people, and this is not like a Zen Buddhist detachment thing. It's not. It's the opposite. It's attachment to our own responsibility. It's like our own attachment to God, our own attachment to other people, because we, we have to love our, even our enemies. So it's the opposite of detachment. But you do get up every day with the mentality of, I'm not going to be offended by humans doing the same stuff every day they've always done. Cut me off in traffic or my boss saying that thing or like, even if it's serious stuff, I'm not going to, I'm going to forgive in advance because of God's forgiveness for me. So that puts you in a humble place at the very beginning of the day, and it, it becomes a practice that over time you get a lot better at, and you get to become what is called patient with people, and you become more loving, and you become less judgmental, and people start to want to be around you because you're this oasis in a whole sea of offense. I guess an oasis in a sea is a really great metaphor. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> I get it. Yeah, I get it. You know what I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah. So that like this is a this is a because of our culture being so messed up. Like if you are somebody who's at peace and is forgiving and and you just exude that, you become kind of magnetic. So true. Without many words, people right. are going to notice. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're just different in, in the best possible way. So, yeah, I think it's cool. Here's an idea. Take the stress out of your New Year plans by getting Factor's ready-to-eat meal delivery service. Factor takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success in the new year. Skip the grocery store's prep work and cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. With over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, and veggie, and more, plus over 55 weekly add-ons you'll have a ton of nutrition and flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions. I love that Factor now offers loads of snack options like breakfast, smoothies, juices, snacks, and more to keep you going no matter what's on the schedule. So guys, head to factormeals.com slash swanson50 and use code swanson50 to get 50% off. That's right. Code Swanson50 at factormeals.com slash Swanson50 to get 50% off. I'll be linking it to Factor over in the show notes as well. I hope you check it out and I think you're going to like it. Okay. So you kind of alluded to it, but practically speaking, walk us through a day. So you're saying it starts in the morning, but Mm -hmm. I, you know, probably like a lot of people, I can, I can have a lot happen in my morning quiet time that goes away pretty quick. How do you, how do you keep that on the front of your mind all day? Um, that's a great question. Like, um, that's a great question. I think it can be integrated in your day in different ways, fitting, befitting your own lifestyle. So when I walk the dog, that's my, that's a cue to me in the morning. Talk to God. I need those cues. Some people use, I think it's really brilliant. Like every time they're at a red light, that's their cue to just get honest about how your day is going with God. Like prayer is you and God talking about what you're doing in life together, right? So once you realize that, you can have these nice little, you know, conversations with him that are very honest. And because you're partnering together in life. So I think I think you can look for different cues that way. Another practice, though, I can say is returning a kind word for difficult people will change your heart. They're being an idiot. You respond to them in a non-idiotic way that grants them some grace. There's that, there's that proverb that says a kind word uh, like turns away wrath. And what we've learned is like, it not only turns away the wrath of the person who's being an idiot, it turns away your own wrath. When you hear yourself being kind, same thing with like a comment and a Facebook thread or an X thread or whatever, like instead of bashing somebody or, you know, having the last word, if you say something kind, any, if you can manage anything kind, you, you can go to bed that night. You won't be roiling about that conversation. You can just be, you'll just set it aside. But if you keep it going, yeah, right. So this is, this is a way to set your heart free. This, this is a genius way that Jesus is giving us how he wants us to live. So that's another practice. I think it's very important. Here's, a, here's another one. It's as silly as this sounds. When I talk about it, people laugh like it's absurd. It's not absurd at all. When somebody does cut you off in traffic or they're being an idiot, tailgating you or whatever, pray for them. It's, I'm not, it sounds like a churchy answer. It's not. If you actually have the have the spine in that moment to say, Lord, I don't know what's going on with that guy, but bless his family and give him some peace. He seems like he's anxious about something or angry about something. Well, how wild is it that now you're not mad? Now you're growing in that moment. Like, so you've actually taken a trial and passed it. You've taken a test and passed it, but your own heart is and it's like shooting free throws. You keep practicing this and it becomes more second nature so that now you used to be the jerk in traffic yourself and your wife was upset or your husband was upset because you're being such a jerk. Like, and now they're like, what happened? Totally. I love it. 
And it is, it is a practice and that's what's so cool. I mean, I've tried, I typically am running late for everything, but every once in a while I'll leave like early or just not have a schedule. Uh -huh. And just for fun, I'll drive in the slow lane on the freeway and just be like, I, it's freeing to just not think, oh, I'm checking for cops everywhere because I might be going over the speed limit. I'm like, totally. I'm actually pretty relaxed and this is so freeing. Why haven't I done this before? You hit on so, something really key there. And that is we become different humans when we're in a hurry. That is, a, that is just a fact. Our moral choices, our willingness to help or not help, like it's all based on, we can be the same person, same place. I've done it. We have this one street in town that's just jammed with traffic all the time, but it's, you have to get on it. <laughs> and I've had no problems in traffic jams there, but then same situation the next day I'm in a hurry and I'm like, geez, Oh, you, nice. You wait, you go through the, the green light and then you, but you hesitated. So now I can't go through it. Like, thanks a lot. Cause I'm in a hurry. Yes. Yes. So uh, same uh, guy. Uh, one guy's an idiot. Uh -huh. The other guy's yep. not, but it's the same guy. Uh. Oh, that is so true. Okay, you touch on something else I don't want to skip over, and that is social media, which I think brings all of this to the surface. But in your book especially, uh, and I hate to get so many laughs at your expense, but you also get a lot of messages about yourself as a radio host, oh, yeah. some which are really mean and ridiculous, but you've learned. Tell us a little bit about how that has helped you put this to practice. Yeah, it has because I didn't know what to do with that. And what radio people will do, like any any colleagues, right? Any anybody in customer service, you get together with each other and kibbutz about how crazy everybody is and what this idiot said, and what that jerk did, and what she did. Like, and you can get some solace from that. But it's like I don't think that's necessarily the Jesus way. And maybe I shouldn't be getting angry that people are messed up. Maybe I shouldn't be. I mean, I've been doing radio long enough. I should have learned. Well, tell us some of the things that people would say. Oh, <laughs> you don't mind? Okay. No, no, I will. I mean, I, I think I put this in the updated version. But one of my favorite things is uh, <laughs> is fairly recent. That was a tweet I got about. I do the MetaShare commercials. So if you ever hear that, that's me doing that. And um, it's the most inoffensive thing. It's just me talking. I'm not trying to be cool. I just I sound like this, right? Just saying, hey, you could save five hundred dollars a month on your blah blah blah, and uh, I get hate tweets from that. And so one guy said, I memorized it because it was so perfect. He said, "Dude, you're the worst. Every time I hear your voice on the radio, I want to drive my jeep into a tree." So, how do you even take that seriously? Like, come on! Well, I know, but I, I would actually kind of admire just the economy of language there. I was like, that's cool. But my res my response was. Okay, but before you do that, can I tell you about a health plan where you can save five hundred dollars a month? Because <laughs> you're gonna need it. No, it's some, some of it's vicious, but it's not that. It's it's honestly, it's not that big of a deal anymore. It's not it's not a deal at all. But it can hurt. I mean, I'm I'm you know, I put myself out there, and when yeah, I can get a oh, yeah. hundred good comments, and yeah. then you get that one or a review on your book or your podcast, and you're just like, ouch, it hurts. I understand. And, uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe the, the kibitzing that we can do and by being in the public eye or, is to remind each other just like people are messed up. And I, I'm not saying that derogatorily, honestly, like human beings are going to be human and they have a lot of hurts and those hurts have absolutely nothing to do with us. And one thing I do with those emails or those messages is I try to find something, maybe you can do this too, or maybe you already do it. I try to find something they said that is like, there's some legitimacy to it. Even if the rest of it was rude and out of line. And that response where you're saying, you know what, I'm going to, I hadn't thought about that. I'm going to think about that. I appreciate you bringing it to my attention. Usually there's two things. Number one, it usually gets a response, which is, oh my gosh, I reread this. I've, I sounded like a jerk. You're the best. Totally. I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> it's and so true. Yes. And so You're you like, win a, now you tell me. <laughs> you win a bigger fan because you just had this honest, humble response. The second thing is it frees you from having to stew about that criticism. 
like you, you engaged it and you kind of, you poked a hole through any pressure that was building up on that. And I, I think God's good that way. Like that uh, we, we grow up and as we, as we get older or no, I shouldn't say as we, as we grow, we become less insultable so that it gets easier because yes. you, you don't have as and, much and to do. It def- takes practice. I mean, there's plenty of bitter old people out there, right? So oh, it does heck take yeah. Practice. Right. And you have to practice this or you will be a bitter old person. Like we're, we're responsible for that. No one, no one decides at age 20, like, you know, I'm going to be a really old bitter person who hits other people with their shopping carts at the, like that's, no one, no one said they wanted to do it. They just turned into that because it wasn't checked by the practices that we're talking about. Instead, this should turn us into older people who are the people at peace that other people need wisdom from so desperately. And again, I think part of the reason I've just been loving uh, reading your book is because this theme has been so on my mind. But one way I've seen it, too, is I just love that because God is perfect and I'm not, it's like, it's like you, you just have nothing to prove. And so if somebody does criticize you, whether it's on social media or anywhere, to be able to be like, yeah, you're probably right. I am kind of an <laughs> idiot, so you know, crazy. but, but God is so good. I'm glad I don't have to be perfect because my God is perfect. And just, it's just, again, it's freeing. That's the it's word I keep freeing. coming back to. You, you know what? You, you run the, you run the danger though. If you do that, you just like, Hey, you know what? I'm sorry about that. And I think about it or, Maybe it shouldn't put it that way. You run the real risk when you do that of making friends. So that's that's the risk. We we people are afraid to say they don't know or they're sorry. Like, be quick with I don't know. Be quick with I'm sorry. Why not? And it, it happened online the other day. I was I was just it was just a perfect example. I was on a, on a Premier League forum, like soccer or whatever. Well, it's a it's a sports forum. I was just it was in the you know, discussion thing online. And I, I said something perfectly innocuous. And this one guy just jumped all over, just typical, you know, internet stuff, jumped all over me. And he's like, well, quit whining about it. And we like something, blah, blah. And I responded with, I, I really don't understand why you thought I was whining. I'm just, I'm asking a question for the, for the customer service department, if they could help adjust something. And his response was, yeah, you know what? I blew it. I take it back. Um, I, you don't, you don't deserve to be treated that way. I'm going to, I'm okay. going to do better. Wow. Look at that. So this is an international sports site where people are vicious. And the response that he got from other strangers was, dude, what a classy move. This is the best comment I've seen. Like he got a string of compliments because there's the slightest bit of grace in a place where people aren't used to it. it it's like a bolt from the blue. It's like, what was that? Someone was graceful. Someone said, I'm sorry. When you become quick with, I'm sorry, you become very less offendable because you don't have that much. You realize I'm not, I don't have much to defend. Yeah. Yeah, really. And I'm thinking this also has to be super helpful for anyone who struggles with overthinking, overthinking their own um, words they've said, how they handle the social setting, or even ruminating over how people have, have acted towards them. And just that whole kind of anxious thoughts that we get in our own head. Yes. It's very difficult to be anxious and grateful at the same time. And it's fair, it's impossible, I would say, to be angry and grateful at the same time. So to nurse our anger, and I, I think anybody who's new to these ideas, who's listening right now, they, they may wonder like, well, how do I address wrong things then? Like if I don't get angry, you don't have to be angry to address wrong things. You can do whatever you do with anger. You can do better without it. And like we charge the people in our culture who, who fight injustice directly with not being angry. We don't want the police angry. We don't want judges angry. We don't. We want you to take action to defend the vulnerable, and you do it from a mindset that's not clouded by anger. You do it. You do it better. So you don't need it. People are like, I need it. It's righteous. See, like, no, no, no. Anything you do with anger, you can do better without it. Oh, that's so solid. So last question before we wrap up and I'll let you go. But how about those listening who are thinking about someone close to them in their own family or in their community that's really hurt them? Do you have any practical ways to see that, to shift so that 
the the sting is less and maybe find a way to honor God as they handle it? Yeah, a couple things about that. Number one, before we before I talk about that, let's talk about the situation real quick where because this needs to be said too. A lot of people they're like, I've gone, I'm I'm in an abusive relationship, like so I'm just supposed to go, okay, I won't be angry. Well, that doesn't sound right to them, and it shouldn't if they misunderstand what I'm saying. Or if, what I'm saying is, you do need to surrender your anger. You don't have to stay in a relationship with this person. You still can have boundaries in life. You need boundaries. You still can draw that line. If you're like, well, do I have to stay in a relationship with this person? No, you don't. But if you don't forgive them, you are staying in a relationship with them for the rest of your life in your head. So again, forgiveness is freedom from this prison. It's not, it's not aiding and abetting somebody who's, who's, who's going to abuse you. Second thing about the, the hard person to take, the, the pray for that person thing is so effective in changing your own heart that cannot be underestimated. When you hear yourself, I even recommend praying out loud. I pray out loud when I'm walking the dog because it helps me focus. I'm still not that great at focusing, but it helps. My mind sometimes will drift and I'm like, God's okay with that. I'll come back to that. Um, but I will pray out loud. Pray, when you hear yourself saying kind things about a person, wishing blessings upon them, you know, God add value to their life. That's what it means to bless someone is to add value to their lives. You, you pray that instead of cursing someone, which means to subtract value. You're going to find your own heart changing. That's all you can control. But you know what? It's kind of cool because if this person's this person's probably toxic, which means this person's probably not just toxic with you, but in life, he or she is toxic, which means there's a loneliness that's going on there. And having someone that can put up with that is pretty poetic. I've seen I've seen friends do this, see my wife do this. There's people no one else can take, and she can. And it's it's a beautiful thing. Like these people don't have anybody. You strip away all the bravado and the big talk and the like. So that that is something that can happen. If it doesn't happen, it's okay. But you you can only control your heart. But you, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Well, well said, and I'm encouraged. Good. And love the whole book, but love talking to you here. So for anyone who hasn't already found it and read it, again, you said your website, but remind us where everyone can find you and your books and all the rest. Sure. It's just branthanson.com. So it's Brant. It's kind of weird. It's B-R-A-N-T-H-A-N-S-E-N.com. All the books are on like Amazon and Barnes and Noble and stuff like that too. So pretty easy to find, which is good. Can't wait to see the next book uh, preview on social media. Do a good one for us. We're going to be gonna looking try. for that. I'm going to try real hard. There's not a big budget, you know, so this is, this is what you get. <laughs> oh, seriously. So much fun. Well, uh, it has been a great time having you on. Thank you so much. Maybe we can get you back after the next book comes out to talk yes, about that let's one. Do it. Let's do it. But appreciate your time. God bless you. And thanks for the encouragement. Thank you. Take care. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed that conversation. And yes, there will be links to all the things we talked about over in show notes. And this specific episode can be found at monicaswanson.com forward slash brant, B-R-A-N-T dash Hansen, H-A-N-S-E-N. Thanks again for being here. Next week, I'm sharing a really fun conversation with Luke and Levi where we're talking about gratitude, what they're thankful for, and just kind of a fun, uh, festive Thanksgiving chat. It's actually a replay from a couple years ago, but in case you missed it or even if you heard it, I think it'll be fun to listen to maybe as you're making your turkey. Uh, This is one that, of course, we want the kids to feel invited to listen to as well. So you're going to enjoy that. And then we've got a few more great interviews and episodes as we lead into the Christmas season. So keep coming back. Please spread the word about this podcast with your friends. If you um, can take a screenshot and share it to your Instagram stories or on Facebook, that's a great way to spread the word. And again, I think this particular episode is an important one to share as we go into the holidays. So thank you so much, guys. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your week. And until next time, aloha.